Good morning. It's Sunday, the 25th of October. And I haven't been able to sleep well since the Wahala with the protests began. I wholeheartedly support the youth who are peacefully protesting. I also want to say something about looting. And they're not my words. They're the words of Howard Zinn, who is a scholar or was a scholar of American history. Here is the quote. Civil disobedience. That's not our problem. Our problem is that people are obedient all over the world in the face of poverty and starvation and stupidity and war and cruelty. Our problem is that people are obedient while the jails are full of petty thieves and while the grand thieves are running the country. That's our problem. He said that about America and really, I think, about the world. And I want to borrow those words and say it about Nigeria. Nigeria is full of kleptocrats people who have stolen our people's money, people who have appropriated unfairly our people's wealth, people whose children are getting their excellent education using our money when the majority of Nigerian children are in schools that do not deserve to be called those names because they are in a really atrocious condition. They have stolen our money and they have taken the money to get the best medical care in any country of their choice. When the masses of Nigerians are going to hospitals that don't have enough medicine, they don't have enough equipment, they don't have running water, they don't have electricity, except if they run generator. If they are to have running water, they have to dig boreholes in a country that has a government. The role of the government is to make sure that the people in the territory over which it claims sovereignty have their basic human needs. The government needs to guarantee the human security of Nigerians. Let me break that down to you. Human security, the way Amatia Sen puts it, is about people's access to those basic human needs that I said, food, shelter, security in their persons and property. All Nigerians, as well as the conditions that make them have the ability to reach self-actualization. So human dignity and respect for people's human rights, that's all part of human security. That's the job of the Nigerian government. That is what the Nigerian government ought to provide to all Nigerian people, regardless of socioeconomic class, regardless of status, regardless of place of origin, regardless of language, regardless of any kind of categorization that we use to divide people, regardless of religion, you know. So I am just saying, Nigerian government, do your job. You know, we are not impressed. And I'm saying we because I'm a Nigerian citizen. You know, I live in the United States. 
I teach here. I study Nigerian politics. So I know Nigerian history. There is no government that we have had so far under this democratic dispensation that would get a pass mark from me in terms of attentiveness to its basic responsibilities to the Nigerian people. There's absolutely no reason for Nigeria to be in the condition that it is now. You know, we want to go and start arresting people because they are looting. But do we realize that we have put in place the uh, circumstances under which structural violence is prevalent as the system in Nigeria that, you know, um, the, the poor, they are dispossessed by those people who are stealing our money. They are marginalized. They are brutalized by the really horrible economic conditions that they have to cope with in order to just get, um, you know, body and soul together. We have made it impossible for majority of our people to put food on the table. We have made our youth jobless, underemployed, frustrated, disillusioned, and cynical. Our religious institutions that should be calling upon the government to do the right thing because they are supposed to be the voices of, you know, um, the creator, amidst us. They encourage people to submit to these authorities. And you know what? I don't want anybody to be anything other than law abiding. But justice and the law are intricately and inextricably intertwined. We need to have economic and social and political justice for the people of Nigeria. There is this situation now where frustrated people are lashing out. I think it is incumbent on the people that have stolen Nigerian money to start giving that money back so that the money can be used to uh, redistribute it so that all Nigerians are able to enjoy the benefits of citizenship in our dear country. I think also there's need for peace building for all our governments, whether it's federal or state or local, to apologize to the Nigerian people because we have oppressed them, we have plundered them, or we have allowed conditions that enable for them to be oppressed and plundered. And we are taking care of ourselves. We are securing ourselves. We are living behind barriers that cannot be breached while ordinary Nigerians are losing everything because people who are frustrated are lashing out. So government of Nigeria act like a government a government that values its people. A, a country is nothing without its people. And no country can aspire to, to, to progress and to development and greatness if it continues to brutalize its people or it allows conditions to exist where people are being brutalized without any recourse. We need genuine democracy in Nigeria. That entails true rule of law that acts without fear or favor. Everybody in Nigeria should have equal protection of the law. We need transparency. You are spending our money. You need to account to us. Accountability. How are you spending our money? Why should you be going to get medical uh, treatment abroad when it is not available for your people at home? You know, if you say you are the government and these are government hospitals, then you go to those hospitals for your treatment and you should not be given any kind of uh, special treatment. 
So, and then all the people that have stolen money and you are sick and whatever, we want to put you in Nigerian hospitals. You can't go abroad. Anyway, COVID has um, restricted many of you from traveling. So as we are now looking at confusion and chaos in the country, everybody that is sane, rational, logical, and I dare say ethical, needs to realize that all the stolen money needs to be given back. There is no reason why our national legislature gets a wardrobe allowance and housing and cars, you know, when ordinary Nigerians don't have any of the above. So everybody that is being overpaid, give the money back so that we can use it for the people. Everybody that has the capacity to think, get together and start figuring out how we are going to move forward in peace. Because if you brutalize people, it will get to a point when they rebel. And this is what we are seeing. So I cannot, in good conscience, start saying eh, looting is bad. I don't want my, my sisters, my nieces, my nephews, my great nieces and nephews, my cousins, thousands of them because of the extended family are in Nigeria. I don't want any lives to be lost. I don't want any property to be destroyed. But let us get a grip and realize that we created this bed on which we are lying so uncomfortably. So do we want peace? Let us have justice. That justice is economic and it is about redistribution. That justice is social social protection for people so that they are not living under these conditions that are untenable. Justice is political so that when people vote, we really hear their voices and you don't keep rigging elections. And we need an end to stomach infrastructure. Use our money to provide well-functioning institutions that we can rely on and trust. Use our money to put in place uh, educational institutions that are centers of excellence. There are over 12 million Nigerian children out of school. This is the largest number in the world. You know, and if it is not, it is close to the largest. 12 million is more than the population of some countries. And yet Nigeria is signatory to uh, education for all. You know, we have infant and maternal mortality, killing our people as if there's no tomorrow. And yet, Nigeria is uh, saying that it cares, that uh, we are going to provide social protection. You know, all this trader money and waiting call is not enough. Oh. You need to really get to work and put some substantive and respectable programs Together, take our money back from all the people who have stolen it so we can afford it. I know the oil market is bad, but a lot of people who have the oil blocks that you have, the governments of Nigeria over the years have given them, we need it back because they cannot appropriate the general uh, wealth for their own individual use. And then kleptocracy must end. You know, we need a bureaucracy that is functioning eff effectively and efficiently because Nigerian people are brilliant. End this mess, you know. And by the way, it is not the Buhari administration that started all this confusion in our society in our economy and in our politics, but it is the government in power now. So as the custodian of the state, it is, it, it's its job to do the cleanup. And if help is needed, there are capable, sensible and skilled Nigerians that can be approached to help and when you are doing that,
stop the cronyism and uh, going to call your best friends and people who will be praising you. Call the people who have the skills so we can transform this country. Nigeria can be great. It has all the ingredients that it needs. So as Nigerians, we need to get serious now. The time for politics as usual has ended. Let us be part of peace building, social, economic, and political justice in our dear country. Thank you.